Hi there, you're listening to Chat Room 17, your bonus episode of Scrolls and Leaves. I'm Gayathri. In this episode, you'll hear about a unique musical form that originated in Central Asia. If nature had a voice, this would be it. This episode is produced by Sasha Semina. And we have a small request. If you like what you hear, why not consider donating? Details on our website, scrollsandleaves.com. This is Tuvan Throat Singing. Tuva is a republic located in Siberia and is smack dab in the center of Asia. The first time I heard throat singing, I was a kid. My parents, who are Russian, played recordings for me. It's an unforgettable experience. I grew up constantly listening to music. I knew really young I wanted music to be my life. But hearing Tuvan music for the first time, that memory stands out. Can you hear it? She's singing multiple notes at the same time. This is Sailik Omun, a Tuvan throat singer, composer, and one of the most mesmerizing and high-velocity performers I've ever watched and listened to. Her eclectic and energetic singing wanders through many genres, classical, rock, folk. Here she is singing the song Savidak. This clip she shared with us is courtesy of Ewan Festivali. What you'll hear is a rock song and listen for the throat singing a few seconds into it. Tuvan throat singing is an ancient musical form sung by nomads across the steppes of Central Asia and it's directly inspired by nature. In this episode, you'll hear from Sailik, who was a member of Yitcha, a world-renowned band that mixes traditional Tuvan music and rock. She speaks in Russian, so we've translated for you. I remember when I heard it, it was like pattern breaking, brain explosion. It was a completely different music that I was not used to. She'll tell us about Tuvan throat singing, what it is, and its links with nature. Us Tuvans believe that everything that surrounds us has its own spirits and protectors. There are protector spirits of lakes, rivers, mountains, healing springs, and natural wonders. You are listening to Chat Room 17, Nature's Voice, Tuvan Throat Singing. I'm your host, Sasha Samina. Stay with me till the end to learn how throat singers manage to sing multiple notes at the same time. Sailik's passion for singing was nurtured by her mother from a young age. I started singing pretty early. I was probably around four years old when I remember learning and singing Tuvan children's songs by myself. Then my mother noticed it and slowly began to encourage me, teach me, and show me how to diversify my singing. Then, when I became a bit older, at the age of six, my mother showed me how to sing with two voices, and we sang together at home. Sometimes we would sing for guests and relatives and friends who would come visit. It wasn't until much later that Sailik began learning throat singing professionally when she joined Yitcha. Here's one of their songs, Ahoy. Sailik is the lead singer, and Albert Kuvezin, who's a legendary throat singer and guitarist, is throat singing in the background.
эксперименты и мое увлечение. My passionate work and my experimentation with throat singing occurred during the period when I worked with Yitcha. This was at the end of the 90s, beginning of the 2000s. At that time, I first got exposed to music by Sayan Honam Chilak, Hunhurtu, and Yitcha. I had these three records, and when I heard them, it was like pattern-breaking, brain explosion. It was completely different music that I was not used to. If someone were to tell me at the time that soon I will be working with Yitcha, I wouldn't believe them. But it happened, and I started to work. We were touring a lot, sometimes for three to four months. I, of course, missed my home. But these were very bright, very intense, and very interesting times for me. During those times, I saw a lot, visited various countries, met many great musicians, and worked in many cool studios and recorded my singing. I absorbed everything like a sponge. Everything was new and exciting to me. Throat singing is practiced all over the world by indigenous cultures such as the Thembu in South Africa, Sardinians in Italy, the Altai in Russia, and the Inuit of the Arctic. But the music we're talking about today is from Tuva, a district in southern Siberia, just above Mongolia. It's full of towering mountains, thousands of rivers, and vast lakes and endless grassy steppes carved out by ancient glaciers. These awe-inspiring landscapes are teeming with musicality. Throat singers and musicians here imitate the sounds of their surroundings, partially to honor the natural and spiritual world. Nature is a unique entity. All of us, people, all living things, draw our energy of life and inspiration from nature. Tuvans believe that everything that surrounds us has their own spirits and protectors. There are protector spirits of lakes, rivers, mountains, healing springs, and natural wonders. And we systematically pray because we believe that this enormous world of invisible spirits protects us and gifts us well-being, happiness, and health. This is an exchange of energy. This is an interaction with spirits. Humans also have souls. Shamans say, which means human soul. Humans, in addition to their physical bodies, have a thin shell of spiritual energy. I think that when throat singers perform, they become charged with supernatural energy because they receive this deep spiritual connection with nature. And this all is not without a reason, because in folklore, and in the throat singing itself, nature is reflected in names, techniques, melodies, and sound imitation. This is a very tight connection. Until recently, Tuvan throat singing was primarily practiced by men. But that's changing. There's now an all-women folk ensemble called Tiva Kizi, which means Daughters of Tuva, and is led by Chodura Tumat. And Sailik's own throat singing practice, which merges with rock, definitely flouts tradition. In general, in Tuva, throat singing is not thought of as a women's occupation. It's a male occupation, so women don't throat sing. At least they didn't throat sing. Of course now, times are more modern, views have changed a bit, and young girls and women like me are now practicing throat singing as well. To those who have never heard a vocalist sing more than one note at once, throat singing can be quite unexpected. Tuvan throat singers can carry four pitches at once. There are even more pitches present, but usually a maximum of three or four can be discerned by the human ear. For beginners, it is recommended to start from low to high. Listen for the low drone. Then, Begin moving up in frequency to recognize and appreciate each unique tone. Not only are these tones varying in pitch, but they vary in timbre and loudness. Timbre can be thought of as the quality or color of sound, basically everything that is in its pitch and its loudness. It's what tells us that the note we hear is being played by a tuba rather than a flute, for example. 
the timbre of a tone may be dark versus bright, thin, brassy, and so on. With this information, let me finish up our listening exercise. Finally, rather than separating the pitches in your mind, try to think of everything you're hearing as one. There are many styles of throat singing. I'll tell you about three, and Sailik will demonstrate a couple for us. Vocalists say you should think about singing your vocal tract as an instrument, just like any other instrument you'd play, like a violin. Tuvan singers take this to a whole new level, and this will become more apparent during this style rundown. First, Sailik performs Kargara, a low frequency style that sounds almost like a deep growl. <laughs> So here's how it works. Salik is somehow tensing and vibrating her false vocal folds. These are membranes in our throat, near our vocal cords that help us swallow. They are pretty static in most people, but Salik can make hers move. And this allows her to hit a lower note than normally possible, creating an undertone. I had never heard of an undertone before researching throat singing, and the first time I heard it, I was blown away. It's a frequency lower than the fundamental frequency. Okay, I know I'm going into the weeds here, but I'll be hardly a minute, so stay with me. A fundamental frequency is the lowest possible pitch created by an object's oscillation or movement. When you hit a C key on a piano, you're primarily hearing the fundamental frequency, which is that C. But on top of that frequency, there are tons of other notes here that you're probably not hearing, which are called overtones. Maybe you're wondering, okay, I think I would have noticed if there were other notes within this C note, which already sounds pretty strange, notes within a note. But the trick is, these overtones are usually much quieter than the fundamental frequency, so you don't pick up on them easily. Back to Kargara. Maybe you're now wondering if the lowest possible pitch is the fundamental frequency, and all those overtones are higher pitches, then how is Sailik singing below the fundamental? In an undertone. Well, she's engaging the false vocal folds in addition to her vocal cords. This creates a larger vibrational system that can produce an undertone. In Kargara, this undertone is an octave below the fundamental frequency. So bottom line, what I'm saying is Kargara is really, really low pitched. Let's hear it again. <laughs> When performing kagura, in order to hit particular overtones, the singer changes vowel sounds, meaning they change the shape of their mouth. Pretend you're saying ooh, now shift to a, o, e. You'll notice how much your lips move. In addition to performing kagura, Sailik has an incredible high soprano range. I remember watching a clip of her performing and hearing her hit really high notes, then all of a sudden hearing this incredibly deep singing. I genuinely thought there was a backup singer I couldn't see, or it's just part of her backing track. Eventually, I realized, oh my god, she's also singing that, and it blew my mind. Here's that clip. Between her extreme highs and lows, Sailik performs Hume, which is a middle range style. 
Hume is a specific style, but it can also mean Tuvan throat singing more generally. The style involves the drone of a fundamental frequency plus overtones. It's often used to imitate the wind. Finally, the Sagut style cuts the loudness of the fundamental and amplifies the overtones, resulting in a whistling high-pitched sound. This sample is courtesy of Imre Peymot from his album Breath of Wind. <laughs> Isn't it like bird song? So let's recap. Kargara, Kume, and Sagut. Two vocal techniques used to embellish these styles include borbang nadur, an added trilling effect using tongue. These samples are also sung by Imre Pemot on Breath of Wind. <laughs> mimic birds and streams. <laughs> then, there's Ezengeler, an added pulsating rhythm. Ezengeler can sound like the trotting or gallop of a horse. Here is a sample of Hume using both techniques at once. Your intuition might lead you to believe the singer is choosing each pitch willfully to assemble a song. But what's amazing is the singer is actually sculpting sound. They have an incredible number of pitches in their range, and they chip away other sounds to highlight a particular note. Tuvan throat singing is such an astonishing practice that it was only last year that scientists fully discovered how it was physically possible within the human body. This is Salik singing Ezer Kara, which is inspired by nature. Like nature, music has many layers, of pitch, certainly, but also of timbre. This is unlike Western music, which is preoccupied with melody and pure tones, notes defined by a single pitch. To many Tuvan musicians, a pure tone is boring. By infusing humming, buzzing, and overtones within each musical moment, the music becomes much richer. Just one second of music can contain a dazzling, vast world of sound. Valentina Suzuki, a leading ethnomusicologist in Tuva, compares the two musical practices to making and throwing snowballs in her book with Theodore Levin, where rivers and mountains sing. Here's an excerpt. In European music, sound is packed compactly into discrete pitches, with the fundamental frequency and overtones all perceived as one. But Tuvan music is like loose snow, and overtones are like the snow spray. This timbral abundance allows singers to fill a space, and when they're outdoors, the music can echo across the steppes and mountains. Many Tuvan instruments, such as the Igil, also celebrate timbre. 
For Saelic, this was the background music of her childhood. Just as her mother was a catalyst for her musical passions, her grandmother inspired her as well. Music can honor not only nature, but her family, the women that came before her. To choose a single favorite folk song from all traditional Tuvan songs is really difficult. Because each one, in its own way, is beautiful, original, and has its own character. I will be guided by what I heard in my childhood from my grandmother. She rarely sang, but every time for me, it was a really special, bright event. Out of the songs she performed, I especially remember this one. I write music, but I never pay much attention to sounds around me, the complexities, the variances, and I'm trying to change that. To be able to pay such amazing attention and care to these sounds, it shows a great love and appreciation for the world around you. It's really breathtaking to hear the sound of a fluttering stream in a human voice, to hear nature where you don't expect it. I think many people that hear Tuvan throat singing don't realize its connections to nature. Birds and frogs can create multiple pitches at once, too. It's sweet to think that, even as we listen to them, they might be listening to us, imitating us, singing with us. Rather than thinking of nature as background noise, think of it as your musical partner. Thank you to Anja Lomsadze for voicing the translations and to Yelena Syomina for translating from Russian to English and to Sayli Komun for sharing her music and chatting with me and to Imre Pemot for sharing samples of his wonderful singing as well. For more information and other episodes, visit scrollsandleaves.com or follow us on Twitter at scrollsleaves or on Instagram at scrollsandleaves or like us on Facebook. We'll be back in a couple of weeks with another chat room. See you then!